There was a trail of blood, betrayal, and suffering of innocent people. People we now recognize as heroes, mainly people who give sense to Mashuja Day. But there has been evolution of the day. After the promulgation of the new constitution in 2010, maybe due to the difference in generations. Hello and welcome to this discussion. I'm David Kagina and with me is a panel of young, enthusiastic people. To start with, um, you can tell us your name and what you do before we get to you telling us what do you remember about Mashu Jade when it was still Kenyatta Day. Uh, my name is Ben and... Oh, what I remember. I think pretty much <laughs> everyone is at home and resting. We are not going to school. That was pretty much it. There was little, oh, and flags put on all shops. That was significant. Moving on to Eugene. Yes, my name is Eugene Mushai. I do marketing and events. I also do branding. Um, I used to love uh, Kenyatta Day mm -hmm. because one, we will have uh, food in the house, a lot of food in the house that was not common during normal days. So we could do like uh, a party. We'll be at home probably with the grandparents and uh, the entire family. For me, that was a very interesting time and a very interesting day of the year. So it was very, very significant to me. Okay, maybe just to have a lady, Stella. What do you remember? My name is Stella. Uh, what I remember really is just, you know, new, s you know, special features on, you know, what Kenyatta did. Really. We didn't know so much about that. And just mom and dad not going to work and us not going to school. Yeah, it's just practically a day off. Yeah. Jane, yeah. let me get your thought. Um, I think right now and the way it was before, right now we get to acknowledge more people who did something for the country. Before it was Kenyatta Day, so we just knew about our president, the first president, and we were being taught in school, history, um, social studies, just all about Kenyatta. But we came to understand that apart from Kenyatta, they were the Kapinguria Seven, right? We came to understand what this other person did, somebody like Jaramogi did, somebody like Tomboya. You came to, do, to understand their significance. That's one thing I can say that is different from when it was Kenyatta Day to right now, Mashuja Day. Ah, and now to a very familiar face to Switch TV viewers, Jim India. Mashuja Day at the moment, how significant is it to a Kenyan youth? For you, for example. Um, I think you have to appreciate particularly the gains made by the new constitution because that is where we moved away from what we might call the Kenyatta cult, which was basically uh, looking at the whole, he was the father of the nation, so we appreciated him more as a result of that. Uh, but the drafters of the constitution decided that there was more to how this country was founded beyond Kenyatta, who was seen as the father of the nation. And so the need, as uh, Jane had mentioned, the need to include more people in that. Uh, but the problem is, even as we've done that, we have, we celebrate the day, but we have forgotten the people. Speak of which, do you think the youths in this generation really care about the heroes of independence? Uh, one, we, I think we do care. And I think I have to speak for myself. I do care. And the reason I care is because I would not be here if it were not for those heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I don't know if the white settlers would have gone away if it were not for our forefathers and our grandmothers who went to the forest and fought for us. Um, so we do care. The only problem is our history is so sanitized that we do not get to actually learn about the real heroes. Uh -huh. uh, I, I did GHC. Uh, I know others did social studies. <laughs> 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 but if you look at the people who are mentioned, they mostly mention politicians. Uh -huh. And not necessarily the people who went to the forest and, and fought the war. So uh -huh. because of that, there is a disconnect. We only re and we hate politics. So that's why we might not care, because we only celebrate politicians. Mm -hmm. But if we were taught about the real heroes, I think we would care more. Ah. So just moving on to Betty. Yes. Jim has spoken of heroes that we celebrate, mostly some celebrating politicians mostly. Yes. As a youth, who are the heroes you celebrate? Thank you. Uh, my name is Betty Muzarika, and I will start by saying I celebrate Kenya as a whole. The original intent as to why we had Kenyatta Day in the first place was to remember these heroes because of what they did 
and them fighting for us to gain independence, not just Kenyatta, but the team that worked at that time for us to gain independence, it's because they loved our country. They loved Kenya. And that was why we had Kenya today in the first place, that we appreciate history in order for us to rectify the mistakes that were there before, that you can make uh, use of rectifying the mistakes and having a better future. So I celebrate Kenya as a young person and I love my country and I think that is where we need to go back to because I feel we missed it. We missed it when we changed the name. Sorry to say, but this is what I feel and we really missed it because right now everyone wants to be called a Shuja. Mm -hmm. That day, I, I mean, when, like today right now, you'll hear when you go out there, me ni Shuja, we kagina we ni Shuja. You know, but what have you done? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. What have you really done? If you've gone out there and fed the street children, that is something that, that we need to embrace. It doesn't make you a hero. You understand? Like, what did you sacrifice? Which step uh, did you make? Uh, that, which mile did you go to, to do something? For, so for me, if you ask me as a young person, I celebrate my country and I think we need to go back to the originality and love our country because if we loved our country if we really cared as kenyans as a people there are things we will not entertain we will not entertain corruption to begin with we will not entertain bribery we will not entertain people um scandling money and embezzling funds when others are dying in hospitals so i celebrate my country and that is what i stand for yeah still appears to be disagreeing with you well, um, you know, the fact that she says that, you know, when you feed street kids, it's, it's not being a hero. I think, you know, I think the name was changed to Mashu Jade because it has to be all inclusive. Now, you know, struggling is a never is a never ending process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and also, you know, they say that, you know, you retain the freedom for which you keep on fighting for. And, and, and that's what we are doing right now. Yeah. We need an all inclusive day that is just not only Kenyatta Day. There's more to the story than the Kapenguria Six. There's still what we are doing today. We are here talking and you know we can say almost anything and not get locked well we appreciate that but there's still more we still need to speak more we still need to create more awareness about what we're going on we are going through right now and those are the freedoms that we are fighting for mm -hmm. and you know that could look like yo we have so many street kids right now we need to feed them mm -hmm. yo we have um, you know we have less jobs we need to talk about that you know somebody just said something wrong on twitter we need to attack that and those are the freedoms that we still fight for. But, but this one, this one, let me hear your thought on who are the heroes. I feel like, to be honest, uh, currently under this generation, we are, this is a generation whereby we are suffering from self-entitlement. Everybody wants to be recognized, to be doing something. So you realize that the main problem is our inability to understand, learn and appreciate history. You see, that is our main problem. You see, and the syndrome of self-entitlement has really made us be full of notoriety. People want to be famous. People are suffering from popularism. You know, and notoriety itself, if you look clearly, Sagina, notoriety is the urge of fame, you see, and it has put back self-worth and self-respect. If you tell me, I'll tell you, because everybody's trying to be recognized, my hero is my mom, because she goes a little bit extra you know, to make sure that my life is comfortable. But somebody else will tell you his hero is Jay-Z or Kanye West, maybe because they are financially stable. So the failure to redefine goals and the inability to understand and appreciate history, it makes that people like Dedan Kimathi, Tom Boyer, they are going down on history for, the, for a bad cause, depending on this generation that we are, the centennials, born 1995. They don't understand what Mashuja is. To them, it is just like Pan-Africanism. It's an overrated concept. They don't really understand what it is like. Maybe currently others I hear their hero is calligraph. Misplaced priorities per se to say, but that is what it is. Where do you think we're losing it? We're losing it in our education system because our education system is a little bit conniving. You know, you're having an education system that releases graduates who cannot think critically challenge the system. People who cannot think beyond their nose, you see. An education system that tells them, you know what? Your grades are more important, you know, than even you trying to be there to, like, look a life, such a life for yourself. So there is where we are losing it because our education system has been redefined. I did history and geography. Let me tell you one thing. The history I did, Pio Gama Pinto, I only read him on one page. Never did I ever know, knew that that guy exists. And then they expect us to celebrate Pio Gama Pinto today because it's Masuja. It's highly impossible for me. 
because history itself and our system it has been reprinted rewritten to favor you know only a certain class of people and there is where we are losing it because not unless we talk about these issues the way indian said then we are losing it because nobody really knows who dedan kimathi is don't expect dedan kimathi to be known in 2018 never he's going down on history and the more time goes the more they depreciate in value nobody really understands who these people are not unless we talk about them maybe just to make it a little bit personal grace for you um who are the heroes you celebrate uh my name is grace the heroes i celebrate are the people who make life easier for us each and every day any person who is striving to make this country a better place is someone to celebrate and uh not to take away from what someone said about uh the education system but i think it's it's our individual responsibility to read to read about these people uh, because uh, a book a, bo- a, a history book in in high school is not enough is not enough to tell us the stories of these people who fought for independence we need to 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 read widely about these people so that we understand what were they fighting for and what are they expecting of us in this new generation mukoma you had something to say um <laughs> it's pretty fascinating the question was who is your hero uh-huh and we are out attacking the system we are out uh attacking people's ideologies but i think now you see now that's where we are coming from that you asked a simple question of who's your hero and instead of saying who your hero is and explaining why you attack something that is not so the question is who who is my hero uh-huh. for me, my hero is, is my mom uh when my dad passed she was there and she's been there and relatives who have been there throughout to walk me through the journey of education and every system has a fault for as long as it's human made it has a fault and there's no system that will build that will be perfect i agree with what eugene says that uh what eugene agrees up say that by the way um education is good it's it's serving its purpose it's it's meant to lay the foundation for what you meant to research because most of us learn things those of us who are done with campus <laughs> mm-hmm. we learned things in campus and we have gone beyond that to study more and more but if the education system does not actually give a foundation then there's the problem if if that's the problem if if that's what happened then that's the problem what you mentioned if you're given one page of one person you meant to celebrate yes. and it's left like that and no emphasis is given to it then there's a problem in that if it's emphasized then it it picks your curiosity because we have to understand that kids getting the education are not adults like us they are people who are very their minds are very malleable at that point in time these people who are aged probably between 10 and 18 their minds are very malleable and if we can actually impress on them that heroes are people who did things in the past and to borrow from what Eugene has said things who we can be the heroes for the future mm-hmm. then that's where we need to start working from maybe going back to gym india by changing the name of the day do you think we are achieving the objective we really are not um and and, and be, my reasoning would be that the whole concept has to be on because we, we often say that those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it yeah, yeah. okay yeah. so if you don't know where you're from then it's very difficult to know where you're going um and 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 so we changed the name from Kenya today and said let's call it Mashujade my push would be to have a museum a Mashuja museum a place that we can go and see and children can walk and young people can walk through that is how we preserve history and when we preserve it then we will not repeat it or we will only repeat what is what is good for us okay maybe coming to Brian are you agreeing with the thought that we we, we need a museum for us to keep in mind our heroes and mashujas something very interesting uh well, we have the like, kina superman and batman and all those fake guys uh, who are called superheroes mm-hmm. mean they're extra heroes the bigger heroes than usual why because they have powers and they have so much that don't exist these guys have everything made out of them channels comic books 
days of celebrations. Mm. So much children celebrate those guys Adults. and want to be like them. Mm. Adults celebrate them and dress like them. <laughs> These guys don't exist, but we have someone who went to the forest and fought mosquitoes, cold, bullets, and so much, mm. a real superhero. Mm. That man fought guys with amazing uh, weapons, mm. with homemade guns. I mean, he assembled, these guys assembled their guns. Mm -hmm. And all those things that they did might seem small, but they, it contributed, it even began a, a discussion. Have a movie of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, have a series about that, because these are people who made significant mm -hmm. contributions to who we are today. Mm -hmm. That's why we study them. We study them because we felt the impact. If I am a history teacher, and I feel like Pio Gamapinto, is not well defined in the book. Mm -hmm. Online has a lot of information about him. I could come and just print a flyer and give to every kid in class and tell them, let me tell you about Pio Gamapinto. Tell all my history teachers, you guys, we need to talk more about Pio Gamapinto, for example. <laughs> J -J. Um, I have a question to ask him, and it might be a rhetorical one. He's saying um, the issue is the people who are making policies. Mm -hmm. Um, when was the last time you ever sat with either your small cousin or your sibling and told them about the Dan Kimathi or told them about this Nandi River, something, like whatever you're saying, when was the last time you sat with them and told them about a small history about Kenya? Even apart from, um, that was a question, question mark, <laughs> then moving forward, um, even apart from saying um, policy makers mm -hmm. and someone said, we usually put a blame in our systems, in our education system and all those things. And yes, there's a fault in that. But so far where we have reached as a country, we have seen we will continue complaining with words mm. that things will never happen. We, we personally know this history, you understand? But the generation that is just slightly behind us will not know. If a child will come and say, my hero today is Superman, my hero today is Spider-Man. You know, you cannot be able to tell that child, but that, that, that's not like a real person. But this is somebody they have grown to know they are superhero. We need also as parents, as siblings, we need to take upon ourselves this responsibility. Mm -hmm. Now in Kenya, if you tell a child who's still maybe in primary, maybe at a, uh, to give you who maybe somebody like Professor George Saitoti, who he was, mm -hmm. best believe you, they can't tell you. They can't, because that means there is a gap. And if you continue blaming the education system, the policy makers, yes, they have a fault. But also ourselves to melegea kidogo. We have mm. to also take up that mantle mm. and teach them. If these people won't be able to teach them, well, let's learn from their mistake. Let us not repeat what they are doing. Let us now teach them for ourselves. Yes, Eugene. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> I was almost getting irritated when you're talking about history and museums and everything. Mm -hmm. Let me bring this into perspective. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're talking about uh, theories, we're talking about write-ups, we're talking about articles, documentation, and everything. This is my question. Can we write about everyone who has done uh, big things in this country? It is not possible. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what I would like to uh, challenge everyone here is that if we can uh, change the narrative from theoretism to uh, making things to be practical, Right. If uh, you want me to remember about the Dan Kimathi, tell me what inspired the Dan Kimathi to fight for the independence of this country. Then, for me, I will use that wisdom or that knowledge to apply so that now I can change something today. All right. Mm -hmm. I can start an organization today that will be fighting for the rights of women in future. So start today, not uh, using the books. Just pick the knowledge and then start practicing the things and the theories that you want people to at least believe in. Allow not me to interject. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, I, I like what they have both said. You know, when we first began, you asked about what people remember about Kenya today, which now is Mashuja Day. You could hear I wasn't going to school, parents are not going to work, and all that. Like, that is the impact the day had on us as young people. That is what we feel when it comes to Mashuja Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, like um, Jane has mentioned about a gap, it's so real because if that is the impact we have about Mashuja Day, then think about the generation that is coming after us. We are not responsible for the generation that has been before us, but we are responsible for the generation that is coming after us. So we've talked about complaints and uh, the policy making and all that. 
moving forward you know these are things that have been happening so in moving forward adding to what Eugene has said then we need to not only change the narrative but ask questions when these policies are being made ask questions if you see something is wrong ask questions because it is in asking these questions that watu wanafunguka akili you know the people's minds are opened and they begin seeing that there's something wrong here it should be like this but we wait for five years down the line after electing people into parliament or into government and now when elections are just around the corner is when we feel they did wrong and we could have asked questions from the very beginning and aside from just making this um information accessible to people it will be very wrong if you're now beginning to celebrate uh, the now shujas or the now heroes while forgetting the ones who were before us but if we forget who they were and what they did, we now start celebrating about us now. In 10 years time or in the next century, whoever will be there, they will forget us and start celebrating the, the team that will be there at that time. So in moving forward, we need to have that connectivity, that line and close this gap. Appreciate who, who they were then, appreciate who we are now, and in the near future, we'll get to appreciate everyone. Yeah. And just to ask, do you think there's an age tag to who a hero is? <laughs> I don't think there's an age tag because um, there's that child out there who will come out from nowhere. Uh, let's talk about Reverend Victor. You all know him. That person in their own age <laughs> has gone the extra mile, you know, to tell the mother, I am going to preach in Juja Market. You understand? And is sending the gospel out there. We would agree. In that peer of his, he is a shuja. He is indeed a shuja. So I wouldn't say there's a tag to it. As long as you go that extra mile, do something significant, consistently, as Eugene put it, you are a hero. Okay, bringing it to Benson. I have a question. Just one question. On Mashuja Day, okay, take it back. He asked who our shujas are, right? Mm -hmm. So, on Mashuja Day, are we celebrating personal heroes or national heroes? What's your understanding? In my understanding, it's national heroes. Uh -huh. Those who made strides towards independence, giving us liberties that, if, that we can talk right now. This is freedom of speech. Uh -huh. Stella earlier on mentioned about um, someone is tweeting, go speak against. That is freedom of speech still on various forums. But then, bringing it all now to what uh, the likes of Eugene have said, that we still have a responsibility. Because there's a show I watch, Blackish. That guy is black. That guy is black. And he has no apologies about it. He's not my hero. Do not misquote me. But then, <laughs> he has taken it upon himself to teach black culture to his children, to his family, and to the society around him. You see? So yes, we have the responsibility, but as Bush again mentioned, there are those who have been given the power. We don't refuse that as a society, we have abdicated the throne of, uh, <laughs> of responsibility as, as pertains to that. Because if that question was asked to everyone, when's the last time you talked to your younger siblings, younger nephews and nieces, when's the last time you talked to them about Shujaz? That will bring very different answers and they might not be so favorable. Yes, there's that, but there's also now those who have the powers. I think it has to be both. Because if we have freedom of speech, it has to be, first of all, we had the freedom of thought, that we thought about this, okay, fine, then we have freedom of speech, then freedom of action, then let's act on it. Uh -huh. Because if, it's, if we just talk today, and then we celebrate Mashuja Day, and then that's it, uh, we, we, wait we wait until next year, we have missed the point still. <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, we, we have a number of guys who are agreeing to disagree on some of these points in regards to who is the hero, how should they be celebrated, and why do we have Mashujade. But just to throw it to Desmond, before you answer your question, do you think we have achieved what our heroes, the founding fathers of this nation, have achieved, uh, fighted for? So this is it, Hagina. We haven't achieved anything. Look at this, as Indians say it the other time. Look at other, other jurisdictions. Look at Congo. When you go to DRC, they take pride 
in their musicians. They even have a memorial center for their musicians. Even if Kofi Olomide dies today, God forbid, he will not be buried at his home. He's going to be buried at the National Museum because they take pride at Rumba, you see, the Luambo. That is where, that is what, that is what they take pride of. Go to Nigeria. They take pride of Holy, of Nollywood. You see, and that is how they, they walk shoulders high with the, within other jurisdictions because they produce the best Nollywood actors within the region. Uh, even fools grow old. That's what I believe. Fools do grow old. And we are also psychopaths because we elect psychopaths. You know, and by time, I cannot justify myself that I'm holy. You cannot be, uh, you cannot be righteous on your own account. You see, we are all into this mess and we have to fix it because we elect psychopaths. So we also are psychopaths and we are also foolish because we as citizens fail to understand. We get an illusion, you know, oh, he's a good leader, oh, he's generous. Who told you he's generous? It is our own illusions that he's generous. But when he gets there, he cannot really advocate for the things that we want. Jim, Jim do you agree with the sentiments? Um, he's made a number of sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> He's made a number of sentiments. Uh, one, I would just I think he meant psychophants, not psychopaths. Uh, just, just so uh, Kenyans, I agree on being called a psychophant, but not a psychopath. <laughs> but beyond that, uh, beyond the semantics, have we have we achieved what we wanted? So one. I disagree with the notion that we have what we call founding fathers um, because fathers are a bit more responsible uh, to their families. Uh, fathers, fathers ensure that they leave an inheritance for their children and for their children's children. Uh, fathers ensure that their kids are well fed. Uh, fathers do not abuse, uh, I mean at least good fathers, you know, their children. Uh, but the so-called founding fathers that we often like to tell, if you take Kenya as a family, we have been abused. Um, they took away everything that belonged to us and hoarded it to themselves and let us to suffer in poverty, basically. Mm -hmm. So I, I often disagree with calling some of these people founding fathers. I'd rather we call them by their names. That is good enough. But beyond that, the whole essence of independence was that we may be independent as a people, okay? And when the colonialists gave us independence, we were given independence. We did not fight for independence. They gave us independence. When they gave us independence, their legacy still lives with us today. Do you actually mean that we negotiated? We never fought for independence? Of course. We went to Lancaster twice. Yeah. There was the first Lancaster House Conference and the second Lancaster House Conference where we sent a couple of men to go and negotiate on our behalf and those men came back and they had negotiated for themselves. In, in, in my opinion, that legacy, the colonial legacy still persists. It persists in our police system. Our police still behave the same way they behaved when we were under colonialism. Yeah. So our politicians still behave the same way colonialists treated us, the same way our politicians treat us. They wave at us when they're on, they're on top of vehicles. They talk to us when they're far away from us on a podium surrounded by security, afraid of us. It's still the same way. So, yes, independence has not achieved its purpose for the collective people, but individually, I think we are freeing ourselves from the mental slavery that Bob Marley talked about. Initially, the, who you have refused to term as the founding fathers, those who fought for, or in your words, negotiated for independence. <laughs> in this generation, what do you think we are, we as the youth, are fighting for, rather negotiating for? Ah, thank you. That's a, that's a sad question to answer. We are not really fighting for anything except for ourselves. There's a lot of individualism um, in this generation. And I think it has to do a lot with the fact that in the past we had a socialism going around Africa, and now it's more of capitalism. And so it's every one man for himself. Everyone is just fighting for himself. If I'm able to go to school, uh, graduate, get a job, set up a family, then I'm good. I don't care about the rest of you and what happens to you. That's, that's none of my business. So based on that, everyone is just fighting for themselves. Just passing it on to Jane. What are you fighting for? As a youth in this time, what will you be remembered for? Will you be termed as a hero? <laughs> I don't know if I'll be termed as a hero. Not yet. But um, what personally as a youth I am fighting for, I can say is, I am fighting for what is meant rightfully to be mine. When they say in the new BBI that um, youth are getting 
tax relief or out of our tenders see at those tenders just for the selected people is that when they say youth i am counted as part of the youth when um, our government said they are creating a lot of job opportunities for the youth i am actually part of those that they, they say they're creating jobs for so as a youth what i am fighting for is to actually get what is rightfully mine Hagna, just before we go on yes, sorry. yes. Um, um you asked um what what her story would be like uh -huh. you know would she be called a, a hero or not um and i think you know you know just judging from the crowd here i think that's the dream you know the dream is that you know right now we we are growing to be aware of what we're going through right now mm. and and you know probably the dream is to change everything but you know i still feel the disconnect even here where we are um of, of what really is the problem you know we jumped from education system you know we went all the way to history went all the way to museums and then we went back to there are no founding fathers so to lima <laughs> to cut everything yet we are now so so really you know i'm asking myself what is what do I, like for me you know what am i getting from this mm -hmm. yes. you know i it's have to ask myself yeah and 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 what is the problem we are dealing with cuz you know it feels like we are dealing with not only a system issue but even a mindset cuz we create the we create the system we are dealing with a culture issue okay ladies and gentlemen it's been a heated conversation getting to interact with the youth getting to know what they think who are the heroes they celebrate some decided like Jim India we are not fighting we are now uh, th no our heroes didn't fight they actually negotiated which we actually celebrate but for you out there a youth will you be remembered as a hero generations to come will you be termed as a hero that's it for today you've been with me David Kagina and a very amazing panel of youths Happy Mashujaa Day.